I'm Charlie Bright of Gold Derby, and, and today I'm speaking with Mark Gustafson, the uh, co-director of uh, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, which will be on Netflix as part of our Meet the Experts film animation panel. This project uh, Guillermo first talked about, I think uh, uh, back in 2008 was when he first started talking about this project. Um, were you a part of that film from the beginning or from the very early on, or did you come on board later? I started, a, I came aboard about 2012 uh, in one of the earlier iterations of it. And we worked on it for uh, a year or so on and off. And then, uh, and then the film uh, went into uh, hibernation, I'll say. <laughs> it was a very, very difficult uh, uh, film to pitch. Um, we went to all the studios with it and uh, they seemed very, very enthusiastic. And obviously Guillermo is incredibly, uh, uh, he's incredibly talented at pitching movies because he's just so warm and gregarious and, and passionate about this thing. But uh, as soon as he said it takes place in Italy during the rise of fascism, they would, their faces, faces would sort of go ashen and uh, <laughs> we were shown the door. Um. Uh, and the, the other thing I was curious about with the production, uh, was the production, because it's stop motion, which is so heavily involved, uh, which is such, is such a meticulous uh, medium, uh, was the production of, of the film affected by the pandemic at all? Oh, very much so, yeah. There, there came a point where uh, we had to just disperse. You know, it was that, that day when I'm sure everybody remembers <laughs> that moment they were like, oh, the world is different now. And uh, we all just left work. But what we did was uh, many of the artists um, were able to work at home, like in their basements, continue to, uh, because they had all the kit, a lot of them. So they were able to continue making props and armatures. And so we, we kept it moving. Obviously, it, it slowed it down somewhat. But uh, Netflix was an incredible partner in this thing. And they said, we're going to we're going to keep uh, funding you and we're going to keep everybody on board whether they can work or not right now so we had this beautiful continuity across the pandemic and we were able to then just ramp up again um so uh you've done a lot of work in stop motion over the years and i was curious as to what drew you to work specifically in stop motion animation well i was in art school and uh, here in Portland, and that's where uh, Will Benton Studios was. And I remember a f one of my uh, teachers at school said, hey, you, you should meet this guy because I needed to do an apprenticeship in my last year. And so I went and visited the studio and it was just this crazy place where these grown-ups were playing with dolls and there were all these miniatures. And I thought, oh my God, if, is there any way? <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, they just, they wound up hiring me uh, right out of school as a, like a, a PA. So I just was running to, to, you know, picking up stuff at the hardware store and, yeah. Uh, so, um, you know, uh, it's, as I said, stop motion is such a very, is a very, uh, it can be a very trying thing, uh, medium to work in. Uh, and I know probably a lot of the scenes were difficult, uh, were difficult, presented their challenges. But what scene did you find the most challenging to film for this movie? Well, probably just purely from a technical point of view, it was the shot of uh, Spazzatura the monkey entering the carnival and going up to Volpe's uh, cart and knocking on the door. Just because it was a very long shot. Uh, and there were so many characters and this huge camera move all the way through this thing. Uh, so it took us months to set up and test. And then it took uh, about four weeks or so to shoot. Uh, and uh, so I would say that one was probably the most complex, uh, technically. Uh, you, you mentioned that um, uh, earlier that it's uh, that uh, an important part of this, that it's set in. Uh, during the the rise of fascism in uh, Italy, what uh, made uh, Guillermo want to uh, 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 set it in that time? 
Well, I think it was just a, a really interesting backdrop uh, uh, that sort of uh, uh, reinforced some of the underlying themes of the film and that the notion of, uh, you know, we had Pinocchio who was a puppet and yet he was the most independent character in the whole film. And fascist Italy, that was a place where everybody was expected to walk in lockstep, follow orders. And so Pinocchio being this, this uh, force of anarchy being injected into that really made for great contrast between our principal character and the world that he was in. Uh, so you have this incredible cast uh, in this movie, you know, including, you know, people like you, McGregor, Ron Perlman, Sean Turturro, Christoph Waltz, Tilda Swinton and Kate Blanchett. How did how did that cast come together? Guillermo del Toro. <laughs> <laughs> he, he had relationships with a lot of these folks. He had worked with David Bradley on a number of projects. He had um, uh, he had just worked with Kate Blanchett on Nightmare Alley. And in that case, uh, she came to him and said, hey, when can we work together again? And he's, he said, well, you know, all the, uh, you know, I'm doing this animated film, but all the parts are already cast. And she said, are you sure? And he said, well, there's a monkey. <laughs> he doesn't have any lines. And she said, sign me up. So uh, she, she signed up for that. And then, you know, I think you and uh, I don't think they had ever worked together before, but you know, when Guillermo calls, people tend to say yes. And he turned out to be an amazing asset for the film. I mean, his, his performance is one of the best ones and he's very, very warm and his voice just exudes, you know, this charm. Uh, so, I mean, you were, uh, you and Guillermo were directing this film together what is that collaboration process like uh, at working as co-directors on a movie? Well, fortunately, we found that uh, we had very, very similar sensibilities. So it was ultimately quite easy uh, because we, we thought about uh, scenes and story and character in very much the same way. And, you know, obviously he brings this whole history with him of all his experience at live action. So that's great. You know, I, I can, uh, I learn from him every day. And the, the word masterclass was used. It's like, it was, it was like a masterclass every day, you know? And uh, I'm sure that he, I learned something from him as well. That's a joke. <laughs> no, he, he's just, um, he's so passionate about this character. Uh, we all just were caught up in it and wa wanted to give our best work. I mean, it's interesting that you talk about how uh, uh, that the the kind of aura that he has around him. And um, did you know? Was there any sort of like uh, impromptu things that he tried to bring along for this movie? Like uh, sort of like any sort of um, uh, 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 sort of like trying to adjust like the look of things or wanting to make things look a specific way? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, he felt like animation a lot of times is too animated and particularly for the, for the story we were telling. So there's this a certain restraint that I think uh, we exercised uh, throughout the film. Uh, also, you know, we were really trying to get at something very real with these emotions. So uh, we spent a lot of time uh, really trying to figure out how to make these more intimate scenes feel very real. You know, so that the connections between the characters were strong and, you know, the, the, um, the, the payoffs were bigger. What sort of material did you use for the um, for the? Uh, I, I don't want to say dolls, like you said earlier, but uh, what sort of material did you use for um, the for the uh, animated subjects? Well, you, you can call them dolls, <laughs> puppets. Uh, you know, their skins were um, mostly uh, silicon, um, and then of course, you know, all the cloth. They're dressed. Um, Pinocchio was the exception. Uh, he was, we actually printed him. 
uh, and it sort of made sense because he was made of wood. And we we really looked at the way he moved uh, and tried to give him a very specific language that was quite different from the other characters in the film. Well, um, uh, Mark, thank you so much for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you on our panel in just a little bit. All right.